galaxy, the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across and contains roughly 300 billion stars and at least that many planets. As many as 10 billion of these are likely to be in habitable areas not too near or far from the star, so-called Goldilocks zones. So the idea that the galaxy could be positively teeming with life isn't hard to imagine. Perhaps this is why so many films, TV shows, books and games have had a go at painting a picture of a densely populated galaxy. Most recently we've all been taken to our starships in the third instalment of Bioware's space opera epic series Mass Effect. The game world is as intricate as it is massive, featuring loads of alien races, dozens of explorable star systems and complex interspecies politics. But how close is the science of this galaxy's alien inhabitants to our best predictions of what life out there might actually be like. In Mass Effect, the galaxy is positively packed with life forms. Some developed, some primitive, some humanoid, some... Big stupid jellyfish. In reality, however, we can't even be sure if there is any life out there. Sure, it seems incredibly unlikely, almost impossible, that we might be alone, but we haven't found any conclusive proof of extraterrestrial life yet. But we could be close. No, I don't mean the latest conveniently out of focus photo of some short guy in a costume or a runaway Chinese lantern, I'm talking robots. On Mars. NASA has a number of these mechanical buddies hard at work scouring the surface of the red planet for signs of life. So far they haven't uncovered conclusive proof of microscopic bugs, but they have found a lot of evidence for liquid water. Water is essential for life as we know it, so if we can find it in its liquid state, there's a reasonable chance that inside could be life. But what about other life forms finding us? I mean, why haven't we had any Krogan or Turian or, fingers crossed, sexy blue Asari-like beings come a-knocking? Based on the old age of the universe and the relative youth of our solar system and the likely development of technology over time, there should be a bunch of alien dudes far more advanced than ourselves spread throughout the galaxy. So why haven't we met them? This is called the Fermi Paradox, a problem first proposed by famous physicist Enrico Fermi in the 1940s. It says, if the universe is teeming with life, well, where is everybody? The Reapers, the major bad guys in Mass Effect 3, are one possible answer to this. An ancient race of synthetic, organic, squid-looking spaceships, the Reapers show up every 50,000 years or so to harvest and purge all advanced life in the galaxy. Think of it like a giant galactic farm. Now, I'm not saying the Reapers are actually real, but some sort of occurrence which regularly caused the destruction of complex life would explain why we're not up to our ears in alien races. Perhaps the universe is just too violent a place for complex species to survive for great lengths of time, what with all the humongous asteroids and solar flares. Another gloomier alternative is that advanced races are inherently doomed to cause their own demise. This idea proposed by the late astrophysicist and all-round awesome guy Carl Sagan was a key reason for his strong opposition to nuclear weapons. Granted, that's a bit depressing. But hey, maybe it just hasn't happened yet. I mean, who knows, perhaps tomorrow will be the day when our mighty alien overlords descend and enslave us all. In which case, let me just say that I, for one, welcome our incredibly handsome and merciful masters. So, if that did happen, would our alien invaders look like any of the species from Mass Effect? Well, on close inspection, the majority are quite clearly based on or inspired by terrestrial life forms. Look, jellyfish, elephants, crabs, um, mole people, fish frogs, frog fish. So what are the odds of aliens looking like species that we're familiar with on Earth? Well, it's very difficult to say and a point of great debate between evolutionary biologists. On one hand, you could expect them to be different, as they developed on different planets with different evolutionary pressures. On the other hand, some scientists like Cambridge professor Simon Conway Morris argue that evolution is really quite predictable, and when you have a biosphere like the Earth and evolution takes over, then common themes emerge. So if you're holding out for a Garrus or a Liara, don't despair, they could be out there. And speaking of Liara, Asari are one of the more peculiar races, what with them being monogendered. So is this actually possible? Well, 
It's not actually monogendered, but there are a number of species on Earth which can biologically be both male and female. Take the humble snail, for example, which have both male and female organs. Could it be that the Asari evolved from their homeworld's equivalent? Finally, one of the most compelling stories in the whole Mass Effect universe is that of the Genophage, a biological weapon engineered by the Salarians used by the Turians against the Krogan, vastly limiting their ability to reproduce by causing stillbirths. Something that may surprise is that we actually use something very similar to the Genophage as a weapon against one of the most deadly killers on the planet, the Mosquito. As a carrier of potentially fatal diseases, nothing quite compares to the mosquito, responsible for the spread of malaria, dengue fever and yellow fever just to name a few. One of the latest weapons being trialled against the bug is a new gene therapy technique which hits the insect during its larval stage, stopping it from producing an essential building block of their armoured exoskeleton. This either causes them to die during development or leaves them vulnerable and unprotected in their adult life. Much like in Mass Effect, messing with a potentially dangerous species' genes to keep them from thriving is not without controversy, and many scientists worry about the unforeseen impacts of a biosphere free of mosquitoes. Mass Effect is one of the richest, most intricate, and in many ways most believable of all the sci-fi universes. The attention to detail is astonishing, highlighting, I think, the potential for games as an unparalleled medium for the science fiction storyteller. Whether or not it makes accurate predictions of alien life, we don't really know. We can try to guess, as you've seen, but ultimately we'll have to wait till that inevitable alien invasion. <laughs> You're right.